G'day, my name is Wilfred West from Locksport, Victoria, Australia. Today's date is the 8th of the 4th, 2015, and it's 6 to 9 in the morning. Just to go down the time. And we're going to go for a quick drive to the South Beach. Uh, we'll go to uh, the bakery first, then South Beach, and then quickly drive around Locksport, see how um, many puddles are still around here. Other than that, it's actually a beautiful date. That's what camera up there. I still gotta figure a way to mount this Sony camera. Like, I can put on the GoPro here, right? But I don't think I can put the Sony camera there. I think it might be too heavy or too awkward. But we'll have a look into what we can do there. Because uh, I want to find a way to mount so I can actually have two cameras, one inside the car, um, or and also probably three. I'll have one inside the car review, uh, looking at me, one outside to go in front and one out the back and try to combine all three cameras together. Anyway, I hope you liked this video and if so, please subscribe. Secure the residential areas. The Iraqi military victory here was helped by US-led coalition airstrikes. Evidence of atrocities committed by ISIL was discovered in this mass grave last week. It's believed to contain the bodies of Iraqi soldiers. I came to this place to look for my nephew. I was told he was killed and buried here in Tikrit. Iraq's Prime Minister has been visiting the Kurdish North. He repeated his promise that the Iraqi army would work with Kurdish forces to take back control of the province of Nineveh. We are here to cooperate and coordinate on a joint plan to liberate the people of Nineveh. We will work with all the sides, including all the religious sects, to liberate Nineveh for the benefit of its people. The streets of Tikrit may be quiet now, but ISIL still controls huge areas of North Iran, most of the western province of Anbar, and various areas north of the capital, Baghdad. That was our serious Charles Spreck reporting. Let's come home now and check on the road. All that of Australian traffic. Thanks, Scott. Good morning. Starting in Brisbane again. Burpin Gary, New Settlement Road. Burpin Gary Road is our only incident, but it sounds like a vehicle is on its route. We head towards Sydney now. This one's just coming through. I believe we've got a building fire at Newtown, King Street and Church Street. Now, it is going to affect the city bound runner. Lane 1 is taken out now. In a, a couple of minutes' time, that changes to a clear way anyway. But we're going to have extensive delays from St Peter's heading towards the heart of Newtown with this fire anyway. Elsewhere, a tree is down. Now, it's hanging down onto the wires at Henley eastbound Victoria Road at Crown Street. So, Lane 2 has had to be closed because it's like a, a big view about half a K before the glaze will breach. And then past that of Roselle, Victoria Road, City Mount and Robert Street. Got a broken down bus far right lane heading up the hill. ACT is healthy. I look towards Melbourne. A crash at Greensboro on the Henley Street, Henry Street, sorry, at the Piana Street. Uh, we look down at Footscray. No change after a shot fire. Barclay Street close both ways between Ballarat Road and Drupal Street. And still clearing a crash at Lindbrook. has been there a fair while south Gippsland Highway, Lindbrook Boulevard. Hobart clear. Adelaide, a crash at Belair up the Sturt Road and she Oaken Road, that's to end the Belair crash at Old Belair Road and James Road. And Beverly killed off with young Australian amateur Antonio Madaka and Dustin Johnson in the first round. Mark Leishman is caring for his sick wife in hospital, but is expected to tee up with another former champion, Ian Woosnam and Eric Compton. While Jeff Ogilvie will also play the former winner in Bernhard Langer. John Sandon lines up with England's Luke Donald and Frenchman Victor Dubossin, while fellow world number five Jason Day will be in the last group with Spain Sergio Garcia and Richard Fowler. Day spent the morning practicing on the tough back nine, and as told Fox Sport, he's got a huge hunger to win this year. Yeah, obviously this is one that I hold closer because of, you know, watching Tiger back in 97 win. Um, you know, that's kind of what really got me into golf. So, you know, I've always wanted to, to win this event. Um, this has been one of my lifelong goals to, to, you know, to try and win this event. You know, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to the challenge. Now with the rest of the news in sport, here's James Contry. Cameron McAvoy has again upstaged James Magnusson to win the 100 metres freestyle title at the Australian Swimming Championships in Sydney. The 20-year-old edged out the two-time world champion by 12 one hundredths of a second. McAvoy says it took a big effort to overhaul Magnusson in the final strokes. It's definitely going to hurt the last 20 metres, knowing that the guy's going to side of me. I'm going to be flying for that backhand. Rotty Campbell has qualified. 
qualified fastest with nine women's 100 freestyle final ahead of her sister Kate, while Emily Seabot won last night's 50 backstroke final in a new Commonwealth record time. Western Sydney is second in its Asian Champions League group after playing a one-all draw with the Korean soccer team FC Seoul at Paramount Stadium. The match ended in controversy with Wanderers goalkeeper Ante Kovic appearing to have crammed the ball over his line while making the save. The coach Tony Popovic says his side was also unlucky not to have been awarded a late penalty when Tommy Urich was brought down in the box. speeding up weapons supplies to the coalition. On the diplomatic front, China and Russia are working on a new resolution. The move is aimed at stopping violence and resuming political talks among Yemen's rival factions. China is deeply worried by the recent developments of the situation in Yemen. We call on all relevant parties to quickly implement a ceasefire and avoid further civilian casualties. China also hopes that all relevant sides can implement UN Security Council resolutions and GCC proposals. We also call on them to resolve the crisis through political dialogue to quickly restore Yemen's stability and legal order. But on the ground, the fighting continues. Forces loyal to President Abraham Mansouhani say they are driving Houthis from areas in Aden, Bala, Dahaj and Abiyan. The Saudi-led coalition says its attacks will continue until Houthis pull out from the cities they control. And President Hadi is reinstated, a demand rejected by the Houthis. Oh, serious Hashem, the Bar up the port. Let's go back home now, come back home to, uh, let's see uh, what's happening on the road. Oh, that and that's got big one and through, still a Bourbon Gary, New Settlement Road, Bourbon Gary Road, the only incident across Brisbane. As I look down towards Sydney, a building fire, lots of smoke at Newtown, the King Street, Church Street, one northbound lane is still closed, extensive delays for northbound traffic, southbound is just as bad, delays well beyond Bisman Road. A tree is down, it's very windy in Sydney at the moment, so it looks like it's come down and it's affected the wires that go across Victoria Road. So if you are city bound at Henley, the Crown Street, only one lady is getting through. This is all happening half the cable before the Glacial Bridge. At Tarrant Point, Tarrant Point Road, Box Road, those lines are flashing away. ACT is okay, just the flooding. It still has Ross Road, Sunshine Road, Angle Crossing Road and Oaks Estate Road all closed. A look into Melbourne, a crash at South Banks and Kilda Road near Coventry Street just happened. So too at Watson's Creek, Elton, Yarra Glen Road and Alba Road. No change of footscray out the building fire. Barclay Street still closed between Ballarat Road and Drupal Street. We've got power issues in the area. Watch out for the traffic lights. Hobart's still good. We go to Sturt in Adelaide. Diagonal Road north near Seacombe Road. Still an accident. Everything else has settled down. And it's got very busy in the past half hour in Perth as well. On the Mitchell
Churchill Freeway, it's northbound at Ocean Reef Road. An accident been and gone. Just take a while for traffic to recover. At Henderson, at Russell Road West, but eastbound at Rocking Road, you've got an accident. Police on point shooting. A crash also at Charles Street, northbound at Vincent Street, West Perth, left lane. Power lines are down at Scarborough. At Scarborough Beach Road at Duke Street, both directions are affected. I'm Paul Latter. More ABC News Radio traffic in half an hour. Thanks to Paul Latter for that ABC News Radio update. Time to get a news update now. It is 10:30 uh, Eastern Standard Time. It's 10 a.m. In, in South Australia and in the Territory, and it's 8:30 in the West. ABC News Radio. Time to Minister has this morning unveiled a new battlefront in the fight against ice addiction with the creation of a national task force. Former Victorian Police Commissioner Ken Lay led the working group which will coordinate local, state and federal government efforts against crystal methamphetamine. We'll target its use, sale, manufacture and importation. Police across Australia have been increasingly concerned about the impact of ice use with easy availability and highly addictive qualities. Prime Minister Tony Abbott says the issue has been taken seriously. I'm pleased to say that uh, all of our agencies are doing everything they can, but we must constantly be ramping up uh, this struggle against illicit drugs, particularly against ICE, because of the devastation, the absolute devastation that ICE is wreaking on individuals, on families and on communities. The opposition leader Bill Shorten says Labor fully supports the government's new task force. I think that's what I think.
by Cowan. The former Ice Virgin and first term Kentucky Senator best known as one of the faces of the anti establishment Tea Party movement launched his presidential campaign with a combative message. We have come to take our country back.
job. That was the, the information that we had yesterday. Um, it was stemmed from a traffic stop. Uh, police said that uh, he was pulled over for a traffic stop with a broken taillight. Uh, and at that point, according to the officer, uh, the man, uh, Walter Scott, had uh, gotten out of his vehicle. Uh, they had scuffled. Uh, he reported that he had taken his stun gun or his taser and uh, took off and ran. And it was at this point uh, that the officer drew his service weapon and fired, hitting the man, Walter Scott, and uh, I believe hit him twice. And uh, he was pronounced dead at the scene. So uh, yesterday, that is that's basically what we knew, uh, and that the officer had put, had put on administrative duty. Uh, today, the, there was a press conference scheduled for this morning by the NAACP uh, that was canceled for some reason, no one knew why. Uh, and then around 4 o'clock, the news started filtering that there was actual video uh, of the encounter and of the shooting. Uh, and then about an hour later at 5 o'clock, a press conference was held at the North Charleston Police Department um, by the mayor of North Charleston and also the police chief uh, saying that uh, basically because of what was seen on that video and the decision made by the police officer that the police officer would face charge of murder. Wow. Uh, within the last 15 minutes, that officer, Michael Slager, former officer, should I say, uh, just went to, before what we have here is a, uh, they go before a judge who will read him the charge and uh, either give him a bond, a monetary figure that he matches uh, or meets, uh, that he would be released, uh, but on a murder charge, this particular type of judge cannot post um, a dollar figure, uh, so no bond was issued, so he will be held until his next court date. I'm not quite sure when that will okay. be. It usually is in a couple months. Uh, and Dean, uh, do we know the details of the, the footage that has emerged and whether or not that corroborates the story that the two men were involved in some kind of scuffle before the uh, black man who was initially pulled over for broken tail lights then uh, fled the area? Um, the video picks up as the two men are uh, basically coming apart. Um, it doesn't show any confrontation between the two. It doesn't show anything beforehand. Uh, this video was taken by a gentleman who was literally walking down the street, saw the confrontation, uh, started to record the, the confrontation, but it literally was of uh, Mr. Scott, the victim, uh, pushing away and then running. Um, the police department could not say for sure whether they know that he was tased, that he was, the taser was used on him one time. Uh, there is, on the video, and I'm just telling you what I saw and what the police department talked about, is that it appears that the suspect went back and picked up his taser, went back to where the victim was lying, and dropped the taser near him. Uh, and then a few more minutes into the video, another police officer shows up on the scene. Uh, the man is actually handcuffed uh, as he is laying in the grass. Uh, then you can see the suspect taking a pulse, checking to see if he is still alive. That was American ABC Network's Dean Stevens speaking there to the BBC's Babita Sharma. Meantime, in the US state of Missouri, the people of Ferguson are voting in the first council elections since the police shot dead an unarmed black teenager last year. Michael Brown's death led to violent protest across Ferguson and several other cities in the US. About two My name's Wilfred West from Locksport, Victoria, Australia, signing off. Thank you for watching my videos and all comments are welcome. You all have a great day now.